Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today I wanted to show you how to get into the position that you see me in right now, where you can literally kill Margit in just a couple of hits. Bearing in mind that this is a brand new playthrough, I've played for about two hours and I currently have had to fight one enemy to get to this position. With a plus nine somber stone weapon, which is the equivalent of a plus 24 regular stone weapon, and already at level 45. So let's get straight into it and I will show you how easy it is for you to do the same. There is a lot of steps, though most of them are super quick and easy, so I'll blitz through as quickly as I can for you so the video doesn't drag on too long. Straight away, the starting class doesn't really matter, but I strongly suggest the Samurai. Next, of course, enter your character's name. Something memorable and befitting of a champion such as yourself. Something like, please like and subscribe. Now that you've done that, get to the Grafted Scion, try and look like a pro and die. Next up, grab the Sight of Grace by Kale. Travel further up the road, grab the Gatefront Sight of Grace and grab yourself Torrent. Then as you're running to the Stormhill Shack, make sure you grab the Golden Seed just here and then head east and grab the three Smithing Stones as well. Get to the Shack, grab the Stone Sword Key and you can also grab the Jellyfish if you want, but we won't be needing them. Now we're going to head east northeast towards the Warmaster's Shack. Loot this gravesite on the way for all the golden runes. Carry on heading northeast into this camp and grab the exalted flesh. Then go and free Alexander for another exalted flesh. Head down and rest at the Saints Bridge site of Grace. Cross the bridge, grabbing the two smithing stone one. And over on the other side, make sure you buy the smithing stones and the pot from this merchant. You can also grab the cookbook if you want. Now from the merchant, head southeast. Drop down by the bears and then keep running east. Drop down once again until you get to this gravesite and grab all the golden runes and more importantly the Fervor's cookbook. Now that you've done that, carefully drop down the tombstones and head towards the Church of Marika. When you're here you can grab the Flask of Wondrous Physic and the Sacred Tear. Equip that and upgrade your flasks. Then head north and jump into the portal that will take you to Grail's Dragon Barrow. Head south grabbing the Golden Seed on the way and then light the Sight of Grace. At this point, let Melina take you to Roundtable Hold and I'll meet you back here. Then we're going to head northeast and keep going east. Run past all the vulgar militia and down the hill until you get onto this massive bridge. At the other side, light the Sight of Grace and rest until night time. Now we're going to do a bit of Knight's Cavalry Cheese. There's a few different ones, so Google your favourite method. But what I like to do is come around the side of the bridge here and just block and roll until he does his jumping attack, where he will plummet to his death and you'll be awarded with the kill. And then try and not do what I did, where I accidentally rolled off after him. However, luckily it still counted, so I'll go grab my souls and we'll carry on. Now head south from this site of grace, jump up the spirit spring, and grab the golden runes here at this gravesite. Keep heading southwest all the way past the minor erd tree, and jump up the other spirit spring just behind it. From here, you can go further southwest still, and light the Sight of Grace for Fort Faroth, as we'll be coming back here later. Run past Big Mama Grail, and just keep heading northwest. When you get near the Divine Tower of Kaelid, come under this cliff and there'll be loads of loot to grab. Most importantly, the Somber Smithing Stone 9 and Dragon Wound Grease. Now swing back round and come on top, and we want to take out this Scarab. He has a ton of health considering we're still level 1, so just try and get him to the edge of the cliff and knock him off, like so and then you'll get the Somber Smithing Stone 8. And then we're going to head directly west towards the Hermit Shack. Once here, buy the Beast Repellent Torch and stock up on arrows. We're done here, so I'll meet you back at the Church of Ellie, and we may as well speak to Rani and grab the items whilst we're here. Once you're done with her, head west and start going down the cliff, run past the troll, and once you get onto the beachhead, start running south. Run past the Demi-Human Cave, past the Merchant, there's nothing we need from him, and when you get right to the end of the beach, grab the gold pickled foulfoot. Once you're done here, I'll meet you back at Fort Faroth. At this point, we're going to level up. I'm going to pump a load of points into strength and dex, so this next segment goes a little bit quicker, and also a few points into vigor as well. Now you can use your exalted flesh and your dragon wound grease and start wailing on Big Mama Grail. With the bleed of your Uchigatana plus your buffs, she should go down in no time at all. And once she is nearly dead, or just as she goes into the dying animation, make sure you use your gold pickled foulfoot. 
Now, this segment of the video, you can rinse and repeat. That's the exact reason I'm doing this on horseback. As soon as she goes into the dying animation, if you sprint with Torrent back to the site of Grace, you can rest up. You'll still be rewarded the runes and she will respawn. So feel free to farm her for a bit if you feel like you want a few more levels. But I'm just going to do it the once because it gives us 100,000 souls, which is more than we need to pull off this strat. Now with 100,000 souls, I'm going to put a few more points into Vigor, Endurance and Dex. And I'm going to save a few of my runes as well because there's a lot of things we need to buy. Now head back to the Stormhill Shack and just start running directly north. We're going to head to the Broken Bridge and sneak around Stormvale for now to get directly to Lyurnia. Once you get past the wolves and you're at the end of this path, rest at this site of grace and I'll meet you there. As we're going past him, we may as well go to where Thops is in the church and grab the sacred tear. Then continue heading down the hill, past the camp, and I'll meet you at the bottom where the merchant is. At this point, you should already have nine smithing stones. So just buy three smithing stone one from him and two smithing stone two. You don't need the third one like I do. I also buy the lantern and the cookbook. You don't need them, but you may as well grab them as we're here. Now rest at the site of grace and we'll do the Leonia segment. I am actually going to grab the map here so I don't get lost. The reason we are here, what we're going to do now is run northwest until we get to Raya. Speak to her and then continue running northwest to the Boil Prawn Shack. Be careful of the broken structure on your way. If it is nighttime, there is a death bird there. So you just want to scooch around it and avoid him. Buy the necklace off the black guard and then go back and give it to Raya. We're done here, so we're just going to continue heading pretty much directly north. Eventually, you'll come to this structure with a portal in it. This will take you just south of EG. So grab the map and then I'm going to run around the left hand side of the King's Realm ruins so that I don't have to break the wall or aggro the sorcerers. And now at EG, we can buy one of each somber smithing stone. Now we'll head up to Karia Manor. If you don't know, if you just hug the right hand side of the cliff, none of the arrows will ever hit you. So rest at that side of grace and then continue heading east. Once you get to the end of this piece of land, you can traverse across the rocks here and jump over to the other side. We'll now pass another merchant that we don't need. Just head on past him and up into Bellum Church. Swing round and grab the sacred tear and then rest at the site of grace. Now with beast repellent torch in hand, we're going to go back to Fort Faroth once more. Here, hit your weapon on this wall a few times, as it will aggro a few of the bats towards that wall and they won't cause you a problem. Now, hold your beast torch up high and you can just run through and up the ladder. Up here, we're going to grab the Dectus Medallion right half, then drop down and run into this hole in the floor. You can grab a Golden Rune 12, then swing around and jump onto this platform. Your torch again will repel the rats and then you can drop down into another hole and grab Radagon's saw seal. Here I'm a bit of an idiot and I aggro a bat so I have to run back out the old fashioned way and nearly die. But what I advise you do is just stand there for a second. All of the enemies will de-aggro and then you can teleport out. Now head back to Limgrave and I'll meet you just south of the Mistwood outside of Fort Height. This is incredibly self-explanatory so I won't show you much bar me picking up the items. Outside you've got the golden seed, then as soon as you go in, on the ground floor in this room is the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 6. At the top of the stairs you can take out this knight for the bloody Slash Ash of War. And finally in this tower and up the ladder we'll grab the Dectus Medallion left. Now get yourself back to Bellum Church and head directly north to the Grand Lift of Dectus. Hoist the medallion and head up. Raya will be right in front of you, but first just go northeast and grab this site of grace so that you've got easy access to it for the rest of your playthrough. Now let's run back to Raya and get her to teleport us to Volcano Manor. Once here, get the drawing room key from Tanith, then open the first door on your right and head through the illusionary wall. Keep running through here as you normally would until you get to the Prison Town Church site of Grace. Now you just want to beeline it through this area any way you see fit until you eventually come to the second guest hall site of Grace. This is one of the only confusing segments if you aren't familiar with this area. So I'll leave this full segment in whilst I'm waffling on a little bit so you don't get too lost. Open the door to the northeast and head outside. Drop down this ladder, jump over the lava. So as we've got a minute, if you're enjoying the swiftness and clarity of this guide so far, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a like. Thank you. And if you jump on top of this sunken building, you'll find the somber smithing stone six. 
Now run up these stairs and be very careful because there is a particularly nasty snake patrolling. As you can see, as I was trying to carefully edge around the edge, I accidentally fell off. But it worked out pretty well because now we can take this lift back up. Also, as people have been asking for it for so long, we do finally now have merch and more will be coming in the future. Links are down in the description if you would like to support the channel. We are exactly where we were two seconds ago and we can take this second lift up to the top and then round the right hand side hanging off the ledge here is the Sombre Smithing Stone 5. Now avoid this fire monk, hang a left and activate this lever. That has now given you a shortcut back to the first Volcano Manor site of Grace where we will now go and rest to de-aggro him. It is at this point where we now encounter the only potentially tough part of this guide. In theory, there is still a glitch active where you can jump on top of the giant mechanism that just raised up the bridge, and you can use that to jump over to the ledge and loot the Somber Smithing Stone 7. That is the only thing we are now missing to finish this build for you. However, no matter how many times I tried to make this jump, I could not get it to work. I've done it in the past, so I don't know if it's been patched or if I'm just bad, but I would strongly advise spending as long as it takes trying to make this jump, because without it, the only way for you to do what we're going to do next is defeat the Godskin Noble. So, you now have three options. One, make that jump, get the Somber Smithing Stone 7, then you can jump to the end of the video where we put the build together. Two, give up here, and accept you are going to be damn powerful, just not quite as powerful as you could be, because your weapon will be at plus 6 instead of plus 9. Therefore, again, you can jump to the end of the video where we're going to review the build in full. Or, option 3. Stick with me as we grab a few more items that will allow us to then take out the Godskin Noble right now, so we are guaranteed to grab that Somber Smithing Stone 7 and we can absolutely demolish the rest of the game. So, assuming you opted to take out the Godskin Noble with me, let's head back to Kale and grab some pots and the crafting kit. I'm also going to grab the cookbooks and the telescope, because I know we'll need them at some point. Let's sell everything we don't need to him. Now we're going to go and collect all the items that we need to take out the Godskin Noble. Firstly, we're going to need about five mushrooms. You can get these from pretty much anywhere. But I am going to head southwest of the Boil Prawn Shack, to this little hill with a sight of grace on it. There is a mushroom right there that you can just keep looting and respawning and looting and respawning until you have enough. Next up, we're going to head back to Mistwood and in the ruins where you've got the sleeping rune bear, grab the five Trina's lilies. Now you can use these items to make a load of sleep pots. Next, we need some blood grease. We actually only need one, maybe two at the very most. You can grab five blood roses from behind the knight we killed in Fort Height, and there's loads of root resin scattered around at the bottom of big trees. Where I advise is directly outside of the Groveside Cave, just north of Carley. As you can see, there's two root resin at the base of this tree, and then another two just here. Now we can make a load of blood grease. There's just one more thing we need to do, then we can go and tackle the Godskin Noble. I meet you now right in the north of Limgrave, just northeast of the Stormhill Shack, or pretty much directly north of the Warmaster's Shack if you have that site of grace. Off on the edge of this cliff, you'll see a knight. With a couple of unsheaths, his horse will be demolished, and then you can finish him off with a critical. And from him, you will get the Ash of War Golden Vow. Now, join me back in Roundtable Hold, where you can purchase any weapon of your choice. I'd advise the dagger, because it's nice and light and then you want to apply the Golden Vow to your dagger. At this point, also use your Smithing Stone 1 and 2 to upgrade your Uchigatana to plus 4. We're finally going to spend the rest of our runes to level up our Dex and Strength a little bit more so that we have the damage output needed to kill the Godskin Noble. And it's at this point that the fun starts. This will potentially require a little bit of practice. It's super easy once you get it down, but it's kind of like learning a choreographed dance. You need the specific amounts of attacks and the specific timings, and then you'll be able to defeat him absolutely no problem at all. But good luck. Let me talk you through what we need to do now. As you come in the arena, position yourself pretty much directly in between the second and third row of seats right here. 
Now get your bow and aim roughly here on the chandelier. And then when you scope out, make sure you don't move your camera. Now apply Golden Vow with your dagger. Then make sure you replenish your FP. Now you can switch out to your Uchi Katana and apply the Blood Grease. And finally, take one or two steps forward and throw the Sleep Pot. If done right, that pot should land just as the Godskin Noble is spawning. This is exactly why we come in with four instead of three. We only need three. I absolutely messed up the first one. He ended up getting an attack off and I completely fumbled, so I have to use a second one. Now we want to do a very specific amount of attacks in a very specific order. And please make sure that you're always hitting him from the side. If you go in for an attack from the front or the back, you may accidentally repost, which will ruin this. So I'll put a little counter on the screen for you to help you out. But you want to do a four combo followed by two attacks and then back off slightly as you use another sleep pot. Once he's asleep for the second time, do another four combo followed by a three combo. Then an unsheathe will stagger him and you can go straight into a repost. Now roll away and back off as you're using a sleep pot because at this point you will have triggered phase two and he will do an explosion. After this explosion, he will be asleep. So you now want to do another four combo followed by a five combo. And then one final unsheathe should finish him off. However, if it doesn't, it will have staggered him and you can go in for another repost, which will definitely finish him off. And that's it. You've killed the Godskin Noble, so you can level up a little bit further. And now I'll talk you through how to get to the Somber Stone 7. From here, head up the lift right next to the site of Grace. Go east out of the room and then follow the path up Mount Doom. Once you get to the top and you start traversing the lava, an incredibly powerful Abductor Virgin will come round the corner. Run round her right hand side and go directly behind her so you don't get hit by the splash damage from her attack. Then jump in this window and go through the door on your right. Run past the snake and into the next room. This enemy will most likely aggro, however, you can just do a swift unsheathe, followed up by a repost to take him out. Then head down this lift, which opens a shortcut back to the site of Grace, and head halfway back up and you can jump into this hidden room. Deal with the enemy and grab the stone sword key. Then you want to come out the window and into the neighbouring building. Come up this ladder and wait on the top rung. Don't go until you see a snake has just gone past you to the right. I somehow managed to time this to perfection. Sometimes you can be waiting here a minute or two, but he can catch you off and he can kill you. So sprint to the left once he's gone past. Hug the right hand wall and you can dodge this snake as well. Now we want to come into this grand hall. Remember this room because we'll come back here again in just a minute. Go up the right staircase and swing round on yourself. And through here you can open up a stone sword key room. Cheese this enemy with your bow because he can be a right pain as you're trying to jump down. Once he's dead, very carefully traverse all these cages, jump onto the wooden platform halfway down, and then walk along and start traversing the second lot of cages. When you get all the way down here, you want to run southwest, just sprint past all these enemies, and up the stairs to your left. Swing around this abductor virgin as well, and you can finally grab the somber smithing stone 7. And it's at this point, our build is essentially complete. We are already level 44 with 10,000 runes and one of every single somber smithing stone, obviously bar the level 10 upgrade. So now you can go and find whatever weapon that you want of your choice that levels up with somber stones and you can instantly get any weapon up to plus nine. And we have not even fought the first boss yet. You will be able to melt everything for most of the game and have such a chilled out, easy, fun playthrough. And finally, the reason I said to remember that room is I will now meet you back in that grand hall, and this time we're gonna run out of a northeast exit and go through this portal. This, as you probably know, takes you to Rykard. We can head into his boss arena, grab the Serpent Hunter, and teleport back to EG with it. From here, we can upgrade it to plus nine and absolutely melt the face of anything that comes anywhere near us. 
The reason I've done this showing off the Serpent Hunter is because it has literally zero in every single stat requirement. So no matter what build you're going for, you can use this insanely powerful weapon right now. And that is it. That is how to get stupidly overpowered and have a really fun, really chill playthrough within two hours or less. Enjoy. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.